Howdy! So, finally, uh, I'm <coughs> doing a, a new teardown video of a nice little bit of retro. A 144 meg uh, Fujitsu SCSI hard drive. I actually hooked this one up to test it. I've got another one which I'll be uh, keeping. And this one, however, is a bit sad. Makes horrible sounds. So, we'll do a teardown on it. Um, not sure what year it is. Very, very early. 144 meg. Probably late 80s. SCSI. Very server quality for the time. Um, as an early SCSI disc, one of the most interesting things is this actually, for a processor, has an 8086. Uh, I could put that in the Amstrad and use it. Possibly. Um, so yeah, lots and lots of jumpers, as these always had lots of jumpers. Um, I'm hoping in 1080 that this video is somewhat clear. I'll double check it before I uh, upload it. However, yes, so yeah, we'll tear it apart and have a look at how it worked. Okay, now we got the drive apart, I'll uh, reset up the zoom on the camera and go through each individual board. Right, so first board we have here is the uh, main logic board, so um, SCSI in here, I'll use a smaller tappy thing. I'm not sure what the jumpers are, I haven't found a manual for this particular model, I'll put the model in the description. Uh, lots of chips. It's really cool, it's got lots of chips. Uh, 8086 and probably controller ROM. Uh, some custom logic. It's magnetic, that can't be good. Uh, inputs are here. Yeah, I might have to revisit this with much better information. However, it's definitely a classic of the late 80s where you couldn't do a PCB change once everything was drawn out and repairing it and re-stamping out PCBs was actually quite a pain. So what you have is lots and lots and lots of these bridging wires. Lots. So they come from all over the place on both the front side of the board and around to the rear and reconnect things where the original traces weren't correct. Uh, it's very common in hardware of the day. There's a little grounding for the motor. Stop the platters getting a high static charge. Uh, I believe these two spots up here, where do they go to? These look like they're where the resistor packs go for SCSI termination. Uh, quite a few of the jumpers will be to configure ID or other things or even as, as these jump points. Um, not commonly used as jump points, but not unheard of. Uh, some main processor and ROMs to handle all the SCSI commands. Because SCSI was intelligent at the time, this was, this was the intelligent version of MFM. So a lot of these components, there's basically a SCSI bridge with smarts, but at the heart of it, the drives back then were MFM drives, not dedicated. So there'll be SCSI to old school MFM controller glue logic in here, processor to make it smart. Um, as well, this drive has actually got a voice coil in it, so there'll be a lot of logic here to deal with having the voice coil work. It was very state of the art at the time. Only really SCSI discs got voice coils up until IDE because they were a lot more expensive and as you'll see soon enough, a lot bigger too. 
Um, so I'll change boards and just pop that one out of the way. Uh, now this one is both the motor controller and some big control chips. A um, couple of some, uh, tiny little relay, a tiny relay, two bigger relays. Um, so this is the motor controller, also where main power comes in, so a lot of that is actually power feed to the rest of the system, or to the disc. Uh, very bubble PCB, but again, more jumper wires, and jumper wires are never ending here. Um, so this one was the motor controller, oddly enough, it also has the pair of wires come down to it that are the, uh, the voice coil itself, so it's also the voice coil control board. Uh, voice coils back then were really simple, not with um, a lot of the... There's a lot of wires into a voice coil now, very few back then. Uh, so this is all motor control, all main power. The capacitor's been flipped to the other side of the board. And as you see, there's jumper wires up here, so they had to fix something. Um, yeah, so back then it wasn't all, you know, one motor controller chip like the smooth chip you get on modern discs, because these drew a lot more current. Very clever, though. Uh, we'll change to the read-write board. Yeah. Uh, everyone knows what an LED is. So this is the last one. This is the actual uh, read-write head control board. Uh, it'll have a write amp and a read amp on there. I would hazard a guess for the technology at the time and this actually did the reading and the writing so the motor control board would position the servo this would also read special servo indexes and actually tell it when to stop and start reading or writing uh, very very clever stuff anyway we will shift next to opening up the drive right so it's now time to open up the disk Interesting. So one platter doesn't have a lower head. Curious. All right, now we got some focus. So, here's the entire head assembly. This is actually pretty cool. The whole thing comes out in one piece. So there's your two voice coil magnets. And that really helps if I'm pointing at the camera. Here's your two voice coil magnets. Voice coils wrapped around the center here. It's only got this two wire input. But what's really odd is there's a pair of heads for the bottom platter pair of heads for the second platter, a pair of heads for the third platter. I don't know why this thing was sick. One of these heads is way out of position. This is so curious. Um, this head has a black wire to it. So I'm tipping one of those heads. This one's a lot shinier than all the other heads. So this one may actually be for the servo position. Uh, then there's no head here. So where's one entire missing head, a uh, head for the top side of that platter, another pair of heads, another pair of heads. So basically out of the six platters there are, only 11 sides have uh, heads on them, and only 10 of those are data. Now there's only 10 heads for 12 sides. Uh, there's all your read-write stuff, comes up into the board. 
So that's actually pretty cool all by itself. I might even keep that out and wall ornament or something. It's like the claw. So there we go, drive motor out, all the platters and their retaining colours out, it's actually pretty cool and yeah these are the iron oxide coated platters, these are well, from an age well gone now, I'm actually going to shuffle that one to the top of the stack for assembly because it's the shiniest looking. So I'll do a video of putting this together, I'm actually going to keep this out with the keep this out with the um, platters on it as a bit of a desk ornament because that looks really really cool anyway so I shall reassemble that stack together and yeah There we go. One very shiny desk ornament. It's actually really cool. Take pride to place on my desk. These platters are actually rather loose. I don't think I uh I don't think I did the screws up tightly enough to actually retain them. Or they're designed to have some slip. Or I just put it together completely wrong. Take your pick. Yeah, I've gotten something not right with this. But that's okay, that's not the end of the world. It doesn't have to work ever again. It's just a cool little toy. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll have to do a video once I get the Seagate running and the machine that's going and going, but that one's not coming apart. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.